what's on my desk today? Today we have got the writer archetype. And when I looked up the card set, Caroline Mace has got the scribe. She has got the storyteller. And she also has the poet. And what I love about these three cards, she doesn't have the writer, which is really interesting. Uh, I'm going to treat the word writer as being like a maha archetype, an overarching archetype that encompasses all of these things. And what I find really interesting is that two of these feature the color green. Isn't that incredible? We've got the green color here. And the reason I say that that is so incredible is because the writer archetype astrologically is simply a conjunction between Mercury, which is green, and the moon. So anytime you see Mercury conjunct the moon or Mercury lauded by the moon or moon lauded by Mercury, then you know you're dealing with a writer. Are there some more principles? Yes, I will go through them just very, very quickly for you. Um, what's also good enough, okay, to qualify Moon and Mercury in Kendra position, uh, or Moon and Mercury four places away from each other. That's very strong. I've seen that a lot. You can have just a strong Jupiter. An exalted Jupiter is sometimes enough. Um, even just through a great Jupiter, you can you can write very beautifully. You will certainly be very wise. That is for sure. Uh, something like a Gaj Kesari Yog in the third house, for example. That's going to produce a strong writer. And even just exalted moon is enough. So what makes a writer? Who is a writer? Now, if, by the way, if you do not have any of those, please don't worry. Okay, please don't think, oh, no, my heart longs to be a writer. And you can be a writer. If you've got the desire within you, there's some reason why it's there. Okay. The other thing is you'll want to check your divisional charts. You'll want to check definitely D9, D10, uh, D45, D60 even. You can check, I think, D20, D24. Uh, there, there are quite a few. If there are any other charts that I think of, I'll put them on the screen. But you can right okay if the desire is there within you there's some reason for that so you know follow it that, that's what joseph campbell says follow your bliss there's something there for you if you do that the writers that i've got today i'm going to go through them really quickly because i'm going to try and do these episodes a bit shorter and what i'll do is i'll just read through my picks who have i chosen here oh well firstly what makes a writer okay just just the mindset the archetype well what are we dealing with here so this is a person who, who thinks best while writing. And I discovered this while listening to Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson was being interviewed recently, and I've just realized I should have looked up his chart. Damn, I didn't look it up. But he was recently being interviewed, and he said that sometimes he doesn't even know himself what he thinks about an issue until he sits down to write a script. It's in that writing process that he knows what to think, what to believe, what he's all about. You know, he finds that out through the process of writing. So whether or not he's got the combination in his chart, it doesn't matter because through the, the writing process, he gains so much value. He gains knowledge of himself and what he thinks. How incredible is that? Um, I've got five writers that I've chosen here and what I'll do this time is I'll just bring them up on the screen quickly and then we'll look at the astrology all in one go because I think that will be a quicker way of doing it so the first one is Salman Rushdie Salman Rushdie is a very famous writer who wrote a man booker prize winning book which I have I happen to have that right here I have tried to read this a few times and I just haven't been able to I get about a quarter of the way through and I just think no I need to be doing something else so that's me I just can't read fiction anymore guys it's so sad I you know it's yeah anyway I used to read fiction huge amounts of fiction in my teenage years sort of maybe yeah young when I was a small child teenage years and then the early 20s came along and it just became spiritual and psychological books from then on it's a bit sad, but anyway. Uh, so we've got Salman Rushdie um, as my first 
pick here. Leo Tolstoy, he's really interesting. I looked him up and yes, he's got the writer archetype for sure. In the research I found about him, it turns out that he really should have won a Nobel Prize for literature or something like that across the years. I think it was 1902 to 1905. And that's really interesting because when I looked up his chart, if I didn't know it was Leo Tolstoy and who he was or what he did, I would have for sure said he's got the writer archetype. And I would have also said across those years, something very good should happen to him. So it's really interesting that he wasn't awarded any prize. Uh, the next writer I've got is Napoleon, which some of you might think, what, why are you choosing him? But I will show you. Uh, then the next one I've got after that is JK Rowling who needs no introduction. Everyone knows who J.K. Rowling is, the author of Harry Potter series, another series which I tried to read and I just couldn't. And I'm so sad because I could see everybody on the tube was reading it and that all adults, all ages. And I just thought, well, this is, I'd love to be able to get into that. And I tried, but I just, I don't know, I couldn't get into it. It doesn't matter. And the last one I have is Jennifer Saunders. And Jennifer Saunders is a writer, but she's not someone who's written books okay so her, her style of writing is different she's written tv shows she has written all kinds of other things so let's take a look at these charts and see what we're dealing with so i've told you the rule and let's take a look salman rushdie there we go we can see it okay and it's in the third house even better uh, we've got moon conjunct mercury the sun is here as well, which is wonderful. So his soul's desire, his soul wants to express itself through writing. Okay, so we can really, really see that in there. Uh, let's take a look at elsewhere what we've got going on. No, I mean, well, this is it. This is a, this is the classical. You know, this is what I would want to see, and it's it's right here. So I was just looking at D10 and D9. But let's take a look at Leo Tolstoy. Let's take a look at the next one. Where is it here? Oh, wow, in the same spot. Gosh, and it's the sun as well. Okay, well, I mean, and it's Leo. That's incredible. So, yes, here we've got it again uh, in the third house. Third house is all about communication. So we've got Mercury here, Mercury, which is fine detail, precision. You know, you've got to have your commas in the right places and your semicolons and m dashes and n dashes and all that kind of thing right you want to know all these things so yes leo tolstoy is uh he definitely features the writer archetype his is beautiful look at that we've got it here in d10 um and we've got it here in d9 all happening in air houses okay so these are houses that can bring you fame fame and you'll definitely be seen. So that is really fantastic. And he he certainly was. He's even got fire here, fanning the fanning the flames, right? So the air is maybe fanning his flames or something like that. Uh, let's take a look at Napoleon. Interesting choice. Some of you might be like, what? Why have you chosen him? Because it's here. I've chosen him because it's here. It's really interesting. I um, can't remember what I was looking up, but we've got moon. And Mercury in Kendra position. Okay, so this, and well, we've got Mercury lauded by the moon as well. We've also got Saturn here as well. And the reason I chose him, the reason I chose Napoleon is because he's famous for those incredible letters that he wrote to his, now, I don't know, were they married? I don't know what these people were, but I just remember Josephine was his lady and he wrote um, a whole bunch of incredible letters to her and that's I think that was the thing that made me look him up when I saw the presence of Saturn I thought hang on a minute he could write books he's not just writing love letters also this is mooning Capricorn here I thought this guy's going the distance he could really write a book so I google searched did Napoleon write a book I'm going to do that right now and turns out he absolutely did uh I've got here this article Napoleon wrote the best political memoir what politicians today can learn from the writing of the banished emperor 
it's really amazing. He he wrote a book and I, I could see that in here. And that's all happening in Kendra position. So, uh, yeah, and the reason I wanted to bring this up is because he wasn't famous for being a writer, yet the stars are here. And he did produce work. He, he did write. He did publish. Another example like Napoleon is actually Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso has got the writer archetype. I'll bring him up quickly. Why not? And what's really interesting about Picasso is that when I saw that, I thought, again, I'll Google search it. I'm going to find out, did he, look at that, Moon Mercury conjunct here in the fifth. I looked it up. I looked up, did he write? Did he publish anything? It turns out there's like a whole vault of 300 poems or something like that. He wrote. He really did write. So even if, like, like a lot of people have the gift of writing, but they're not going to be famous for it or they don't use it. Well, it gets used. I mean, if, if you've got it in your chart, I think it will get used. It's a funny one because sometimes some of you will book me for a reading and, yeah, some of you do have a writer archetype, but I can kind of tell from your form notes maybe that you're not using it. You know, sometimes I can see that. Um, it's really interesting. So some people do have it. It's really interesting. Now look at Pablo Picasso. We've got him Mercury lauded by moon, Mercury lauded by moon. I mean, it it got used in this lifetime. That writer gift did get used. So that is pretty interesting. Let's take a look at J.K. Rowling. Uh, J.K. Rowling, where is she? There we go. All right, so we've got Moon lauded by Mercury. And we've got Mars in here as well, so she's definitely going to do something about it. Okay, uh, let's have a look at Mercury. Mercury is here in the eighth with Venus. So that's the artist archetype. It's really interesting that in her books, her Harry Potter books, I believe she has this thing called the Dementors. I guess some character or something. Again, I haven't read the books. I don't know too much about this. I've read articles about it. And I've read articles about how the Dementors, is it's like a creative expression of her depression. She went through a severe depression and she alchemized that. She turned it into art. Okay, we've got the artist archetype here in the eighth house where you can have emotional trauma, depression, life comes to a stop, things like that. So, yeah, we can definitely see uh, her, not only her writer archetype, but her artist archetype alchemizing her pain. Okay. Another thing that's pretty interesting is that she's got Saturn opposite the artist archetype. So, she she went the distance, didn't she? She it's this she was able to not just write one book, but she wrote many books, and they were all very long books. I do believe they were they were it was a proper big long thing. So, uh, and that's a good contrast. J.K. Rowling is a good contrast to the next one, which is Jennifer Saunders. And well, I mean, she does have her Saturn opposite the Moon here, this exalted Moon here. But we've got here Mercury lauded by the moon. And what I like about when we look at her from the moon perspective, we've got all the planets that are involved in her writing kind of up here in this top corner of the chart, which is when we're looking at the seasons, we're looking at spring springtime kind of um, moving into summer but it's it's spring type energy it's it's the light-hearted side of life you know it's fun it's comedy it's um and we will look at comedy okay she's got mars casting aspect onto this mercury here which is where the comedy is coming from we will look at uh the comedian archetype but the reason I like looking at Jennifer Saunders is because her writing was kind of short in nature. She wasn't writing great big long texts or long books or any of that. 
a lot of her work is lighthearted. It's short. You know, she's writing a one and a half hour movie or she's writing a half hour TV episode. It's kind of a little bit like being uh, in advertising. You know, you work in advertising, you're writing some short little thing. And within six weeks, you're seeing it on a billboard at Heathrow Airport or something like that. So, yeah, that it, it, we've got that kind of spring, summer, lighthearted energy that's in here. So I could keep going. Uh, I, as you can see here, I've got quite a few other charts. And we'll just have it. We'll, we'll dip into uh, why not some very famous writers. Let's have a look at Rumi. Rumi, you can see he's got the writer archetype here in the 10th house. He's also got an exalted Jupiter. Okay. And that exalted Jupiter is here in the eighth, you know, when it comes to trauma and, and great difficulty and great sorrow, he was enormously wise, you know, and this incredible wisdom from the eighth house is, is what's being drawn into the writer archetype here. This is, this is what he's showing the world. He's showing the world how to alchemize your pain. Uh, I adore Rumi. I think he's absolutely incredible. And what about William Shakespeare? We might as well just touch in here and see what's going on here. This is really interesting. This is an example where we have an exalted moon and we've got an exalted Jupiter here. And even though the moon Mercury thing isn't so strong, in fact, his Mercury is debilitated, uh, yeah, we can see, of course, the classic writer archetype here in D10 career chart that is in there. But even off the back of just an exalted moon where you think clearly and beautifully, and of course, exalted Jupiter here is just pure wisdom. You know, um, just off the back of that, you can create incredible work. So guys, that was my take on the writer archetype. I hope this was a good episode for you. Let me know in the comments below how you got on with this episode. Please do not worry if you don't have this. Remember, check the placements that I've talked about across your other divisional charts. But even if it's nowhere to be found and you want to write a book, make sure you write a book. Look for Leo energy. Leo energy is the thing that doesn't care whether it's in the chart or not. Leo, if Leo wants to do it, Leo will get it done. So look that up. There's always a loophole here in astrology. But let me know how you got on in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.